Developed by Richard Morris, the Morris Water Maze is a behavioral procedure that has traditionally been employed to examine spatial learning and memory in rodents. It has been widely used, for example, to study the effects of pharmaceutical drugs, brain development, neurocognitive deficits, and aging. Generally, the Morris Water Maze consists of a circular pool filled with opaque water and a small platform, which the subject must find to escape the water. On some trials, the platform is hidden just beneath the surface, and on other trials, it is clearly visible a few centimeters above it. The subject, usually a rodent, is placed in the pool and allowed to swim in search of the platform to escape the water by using navigation cues. The researcher assesses the subject's neurocognitive functions by examining behavioral measures such as the amount of time that it takes the subject to find the platform the distance traveled, and the time spent searching specific areas of the pool. The physical version of the Morris water maze has been useful in understanding spatial learning and memory in rodents, and by extrapolation in humans, while large-scale versions of the Morris maze have been used to test human participants, researchers such as Astor point out these large mazes can be cumbersome, expensive, taxing on human participants, and cannot be easily adapted to complex experimental designs that use technology such as eye tracking and functional imaging. And obviously it is riskier to put human beings in deep water until they find the hidden platform to escape. As well, the rules that govern ethical conduct of research with human subjects mean that no children, nor anyone with physical or mental impairments, could participate in such studies. That restriction makes certain valuable kinds of investigations, such as developmental studies, impossible. For these reasons, virtual versions of the Morris water maze have been developed to test spatial cognition in human participants. Besides being more economical than large-scale mazes, a virtual maze provides a greater degree of experimental control and technical flexibility when testing participants. In addition, a virtual maze facilitates the development of comparative studies in which spatial learning and memory can be investigated in relation to other aspects of human cognition, such as problem solving in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We developed a virtual version of the Morris maze, which uses the Open Simulator 3D application server to generate three-dimensional environments. The virtual Morris maze paradigm in our research consists of a control area and the maze room. In the control area, several interactive buttons allow the researcher to change experimental parameters such as trial type and cue visibility. From this control area, the participants can also navigate into the maze. During an experiment, the participant takes control of an avatar in the likeness of a rat and uses the arrow keys to move forward, left, and right. To maintain experimental consistency with previous studies in which rodent subjects have been used, the participant is not allowed to move backwards. To start, the participants are instructed to right-click on the orientation button and choose Teleport. This action transfers the avatar onto the deck of the pool where participants familiarize themselves with the navigation controls and the layout of the maze room. Once participants are familiar with the controls and the room layout, they type OK and press Enter to teleport back to the control area. In the first set of training trials, called the Visible Platform Trials, participants teleport into the pool. A single proximal cue is located on the pool wall and a distal cue is located on the room wall. A bright pink target is clearly visible on the surface of the water, indicating the location of the platform. Participants are instructed to move to this target to reach the platform and escape the water. Once they reach the target, participants are held in place. They are told to look around to familiarize themselves with their surroundings. After 10 seconds have elapsed, the trial concludes and participants are automatically teleported back to the control area 
to begin the next trial. In our experimental protocol, each participant completes four visible platform trials. On each trial, the participant's starting location is randomly determined among four equally spaced points. The location of the platform changes on each trial until all four quadrants of the pool have been visited. The aim of the training trials is to ensure the participants understand the task and are able to complete it. After participants have completed the four visible platform trials, they are tested on 10 hidden platform trials and one additional probe trial. The hidden platform trials are similar to the visible platform trials, except that the target is no longer visible. Instead, participants are told that the platform is hidden and are instructed to search for the area where it is located. Once they step over the hidden platform, the avatar is held in place for 10 seconds and participants are encouraged to look around to learn the location of the platform, which remains in the same location for the remainder of the hidden trials. If they fail to find the platform within three minutes, then the target appears and participants are instructed to move towards it. When the 10 seconds have elapsed after reaching the platform, participants are automatically teleported back to the control area to start the next trial. If participants are successfully learning and memorizing the location of the platform, then they will reach it faster with each additional trial. After the 10 hidden platform trials, the participants complete one final trial called the probe trial. In this trial, the platform remains hidden and cannot be activated even if the participant passes over it. The probe trial lasts for 20 seconds and once the time is up, the trial concludes. If participants have learned the correct location of the platform, they will exhibit a spatial bias towards the platform area. This spatial bias can be measured in several ways, such as the path trajectory, quadrant search time, and distance traveled on each quadrant. This participant, for instance, moved directly towards the platform area and spent most of the probe trial looking for the platform in the correct area. So we can infer that they learned the location of the hidden platform during the training trials. The participant's spatial strategy can further be analyzed by examining the patterns of their movements. These navigation path patterns are useful in predicting task performance and changes in learning strategies. The virtual maze is a useful and flexible tool for measuring human spatial learning and memory.